Hey, what's up, everybody? RJ back with another RJ show today. Um, could be doing most of it solo. We'll have a few drop in, drop out calls probably. Uh, but right now, I do have a person on the line, uh, Rob Deerdeck. Rob Deerdeck, are you there? Yeah. All right. Well, today we're going to start things off by talking about the uh, Bully Ray trash talking a fan after Tina went off the air. Um, something that happened, obviously, a few days ago, but something that's still being talked about, and I haven't had a chance to really discuss it with anyone, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now with you. Uh, first of all, are you familiar with it? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, for anyone that's listening in that does not know about it, I'm going to go ahead and play a clip for you guys really quickly. Uh, it's just going to be a clip, and it, it might be a little grindy because it was taken on a camera, but this is basically what he said to the fan. there was the clip and for if you guys couldn't hear it he basically said a lot of uh very uh, uh what, what would be the correct uh term for that what would you call those words very uh, very uh, well i don't i don't want to say the disturbing. Well, i wouldn't say the story I'd, I'd say i'd say that they're very, very they're anti-gay insults right yeah yeah inappropriate well like he, he he was probably doing it just probably well, the funny thing, but he really didn't mean to say it. Well, the the funny thing is, Bully Ray uh, or Bubba Ray or whatever Mark, whatever you want to call the guy, he is known not not this isn't a recent thing. This isn't a teenage thing. He's known for being a giant jerk in real life, you know, and yeah, uh, he's not from from what I've been told from ed everybody that knows him well enough to have an opinion on him, is that he is he is a jerk. You know, in real life, he just is most. Most wrestlers don't really like him that much. Uh, but uh, the funny thing is, after saying that, uh, Dixie Carter pretty much jumped him, you know, on Twitter, saying, Heard at Bully Ray 5150 made inappropriate comments to a fan in Chicago. This will not be tolerated. Sincere apologies on behalf of TNA. And the funny thing is, j right after, literally, literally exactly 10 minutes, that happened at 10.14 p.m., and then Bully Ray tweeted at 10, 4, uh, 24 p.m. Uh, he said, made an inappropriate comment to a fan in Chicago. If anyone was offended by this, I do apologize. No harm was meant. So definitely, Dixie Carter was definitely getting on him. You know, he was going to be in trouble. And that title run was probably going to be really short-lived if he kept that kind of thing going. But uh, what's your thoughts on uh, those comments? Um... You know, he probably didn't mean to say it, but in other words, he wanted to say it just to probably fit his real character, and it it probably was funny to some people how he said it, but yeah. others not. Yeah, well, but it's kind of a fifty-fifty thing. Yeah, well, for me, but some people. For me, the thing is, uh, I see it both ways. I see I would not want to be that fan in the world that paid their money. And to get embarrassed in front of everyone you know, all your friends, and all you know, and now it's obviously on YouTube and other places of getting embarrassed like that, getting yelled at like that. I mean, the guy was big. I don't know if you've seen the video. If everyone that hasn't seen the video should definitely check it out. The guy, the guy was like a foot taller than Bully Ray. I mean, he was way bigger than Bully Ray. And if I mean, if that would have happened to me, I would have definitely thought about headbutting him right in the head or something like that. You know, but uh. Just the way it went, I mean, the guy did absolutely nothing, and it, it did it did look bad for him. But at the same time, uh, it it really does fit his character. And as a fan, you like seeing you like seeing people do really bad things to get really 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 negative heat on them, get super heat. We're talking, we're talking Miami in the summertime heat. Yeah, uh, and you're talking, and it's 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 something. It's we're talking. You left the oven on <laughs> way too long heat. And and that's the kind of heat that he really needs, and he is definitely one of the top heels in in wrestling right now. Uh, people talk about you know he's 
he's getting too old to be champion and stuff. Well, I mean, I understand the fact. I mean, yes, he is in his 40s, and the fact that he's just lost weight is not a good reason to become champion. I do agree with people saying that. But TNA really doesn't have anything else going on that's any better than this right now. I mean, if you, I have to fast forward through half the shows because I see stuff with the Hot Garbage X Division, which the reason I call it Hot Garbage now is because, I mean, the X Division used to be pretty good when you had Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Daniels, just to name a few. And the Aaron. Exactly, just to name a few. Uh, and the, the X Divisions went farther and farther away and, and as, as far as uh, my interest in it. And I just, I just don't think, I really just don't think that it's going to be getting any better anytime soon. Uh, the X Division is one of the parts of the show I don't like watching. I sort of like watching Joey Ryan out there, because uh, Joey Ryan and, and Matt Morgan, because it's just, it reminds me of like an old Val Venus character, which was just really entertaining to me. Uh, but I, I'm hoping they break them up, though, because Joey Ryan is definitely holding Matt Morgan down. I noticed lately Matt Morgan's been kind of, you know, doing his own thing, which is good. And I'm hoping that, you know, goes into something, you know, hopefully gets him into maybe the title picture not too long, you know, away or something. Maybe Hulk Hogan calls up on, you know, some of the guys to support. The, I, I'm kind of tired of seeing the, T, the TNA guys versus the Ace and Eights guys, though. Ultimately, I think this is definitely going to going to come down to Hogan versus Bully Ray at some point for the title. Oh, yeah. Which anyone that has listened to any of my videos knows that we reported here that Hulk Hogan said that he his dream is to be TNA champion or he'd like to be TNA champion in 2013 and everything is running that direction of that actually happening now. So. I think it is. I, it might have that same anniversary if uh, Bully Ray keeps the title till then. I mean, I I mean Hogan right now is you know has that fake knee injury right now and. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, I don't, I don't. If the thing is, you have to believe Hogan. Hogan would win the title. Because if Hogan's yeah, going to do a match, he's dang sure not going to come back to job. No. You know what I mean? So he's definitely going to win. And uh, I, I mean, it'd be amazing to see a Hogan leg drop. Cause we haven't seen a Hogan leg drop in like five years. But uh, I think the last Hogan leg drop we saw was whenever they did that uh, Australian tour before he came to Impact. Uh, when he uh, when he ankled Ric Flair right in the middle of the ring, <laughs> which I thought was ridiculous, I never did understand that, you know. Uh, but that's just something that happened. I mean, they're a lot they're a lot more careful about it nowadays. But but I'm, I'm, when you're when you're on the ground, when you're Hulk Hogan on the ground. But, I mean, I don't know why your your first instinct is to grab Ric Flair's tights and and like pull <laughs> pull on those to get up, and they just fall right down. It's ridiculous. But uh. <laughs> That that's that's just the way that's just the way Hulk Hogan does things. I guess he just pulls on people's tights when when he's trying to get up. But uh, on other news, Randy Orton uh, going heel soon. Do you think that's a possibility? I think it's going to be a possibility. At this is what I think is happening at WrestleMania. Might happen at WrestleMania. He might turn his back on Sheamus and Big Show, and he will he'll be probably helping out the Shield. That's what you and know. What I was going to say. I think that. My theory, and this is kind of out there, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But my theory is that Randy Orton is the guy behind the shield. Probably. He would fit perfect. He would, could literally take the shield to where no one... It, it'd be a lot better than legacy. legacy. It'd be a lot better than Legacy. And this would be like full on... I mean, I think about it. Orton is goes heel. He's the leader of the shield. And he, you know, they help him get back in that title picture and get that World Heavyweight title on SmackDown. Yeah. I mean, think about. It. I think that. I think ultimately, that's my prediction: is that Randy Orton is behind the Shield. Uh, I know that's a little crazy, but if you really think about it, it could work really well. But I mean, doesn't mean it's going to happen. But I think it happens. I think it's going to happen. And I really hope it happens. So yeah, that's my two cents on that. Uh, Brock Lesnar and Triple H. Uh -huh. In my opinion. There is absolutely no way Triple H can lose this match at Mania. I already thought yeah. he was going to win because he has to get his win back and he's known for burying people at WrestleMania, hence Randy Orton at WrestleMania 25. <coughs> but I think that this, uh, this, this stipulation that he has to retire seals the deal. I think there's no way in the world that Triple H is going to lose at WrestleMania. 
because we all know, even if he lost, it'd be a phony, fake retirement, just like nine months ago, oh, my arm's broken, I don't think you'll see the game again with his false tears, and uh, I don't think oh, you're going to see the game again, even though I'm backstage every night, but, uh, you know, I, I, I clearly don't think that Triple H's last match is anywhere near here. I, uh, I think that Triple H is going to wrestle at least another four or five years off and on, probably, because probably one or two matches a year, maybe the Undertaker strategy, but... I think it'd be a mistake to if, if if he lost this match it'd be dumb because there's no way it's his last match. That's what I'm getting at with this. But I don't know. Comment uh in the, and let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's Triple H's last match? Uh subscribe and follow me on Twitter at XRJX seven twenty. Once again that's XRJX seven twenty. And uh Rob Deerdeck, would you like to throw your Twitter out there? Yeah, it's at the show off. 55. At the show off 69, everybody. Don't forget. 55. Oh, at the show off 54, ladies and gentlemen. No. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> at the show off 55, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, follow him. Uh, follow me first, though. That's way more important. It'll be, uh, and I'll, I'll follow you back, too. And apparently, he will good. follow you back. That's how bad he wants your follow. So, he will, <laughs> he will definitely follow you back. Um... That's about it. Uh, thanks for watching this. I will have more videos up this week. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Think the, the video is too short? you think it's too long? Do you think that the topics were not addressed you know, in the proper way? Just, just let me know. Comment, subscribe. Talk to you guys later.